Got it. What is going on, everyone? I am joined by the Welsh dragon himself. No oh, nickname yeah. for him. Connor Sean McKay, obviously. Fighting UKFC in December. You've had a bit of a change to opponent, but ahead of that fight, how are you feeling for it, buddy? Good. I feel like um, the opponent change isn't really relevant, no matter like who I was going to fight. I feel like the outcome is going to be the same. It's a bit shit because I've been preparing for Romeo and now I'm obviously fighting Matthew Pugh. I know the post is not released yet, but yeah, I've been preparing for him, but I'm going to fight Matthew now. So yeah, I'm ready to go, but it's just an opponent change, that's all. And then as well this year, I think, I think at the start of the year, you'd had one, you were 1 0 in the K1 bout this year, and then you had a one mixed martial arts bout, but to now be 3 0 at the end, chance to go 4 0 at the end of the year. What do you see that setting you up for in 2023 in terms of obviously getting that 4 0 record if you get the win? Yeah, it's good. Um, well, 4 0 is a solid record. I feel like I could have got some more fights in, but I was supposed to fight on Almighty in July. The show got pulled. And then I, I took some, like I was out till October. I wanted to fight again, maybe on maybe in August uh, on the Kingdom show. But now nah, it, sets, it sets me up nicely for next year. Uh, at four and all, I'll only be fighting like the highest level competition um, in amateur. So I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, as well. And, and then as well, only 18, you're living in the gym as well. Still, I do believe. But in, in terms of always being in that environment 24 tw- seven, what, what's that been like as a fighter to pretty much always be in that same sort of atmosphere? Yeah, it's good that like I've I left Wales for a reason. Do you know what I mean? I've come here to. Like I'm, I'm not messing around. I've come here to try and get myself to the pinnacle of the sport and improve as a fighter because I'm living in the gym. Like I'm improving consistently. Like I'm different like, to how I was two months ago. Like my game's coming on because I'm just in the gym. I'm doing all the sessions and doing extra training and stuff with me grappling coach Danny T. And yeah. Phil, like Dean and everyone. I'm just coming on loads. Yeah, and, and then in terms of obviously the, the 125, 135, 145, any division really uh, aspire, but though the, the, the early divisions, 125, 135, it's an in, it's incredibly stacked at that gym. So in terms of having those sort of people to be training around and just the gym in general, the atmosphere of it, what's that sort of been like the last few months as it continues to sort of rise? Yeah, yeah, it's great. We've probably got arguably the best, the best gym for amateurs in the country. And then... Oh, like flyweight or bantamweight, like it's stacked. We've got kids like Jordan Molinari come up all the way from like Kent. Do you know what I mean to train here? Because we've got like so many, so many good bodies at like one twenty five, one thirty five, one forty five. So it's good, and all the boys are a laugh. Do you know what I mean? It's like we're a big group. It's not just there's no division. We all we're, we're all sound. We're all good mates outside of fighting and outside the gym. So it's good. Yeah, and then in terms of looking at this fight, obviously, before I know it, it puts you a little bit under the radar in a sense in terms of the record. But do you feel as though next year you want to start breaking into that top 15, that top 20, or even looking into the top 10 now? Yeah, definitely. I feel like, um, I don't know, topology is a bit mad. It just pushes specific people. Like, I don't know, it's a bit mad. Like... Luke looks like highly skilled. He's five and two. Do you know what I mean? He's he, he's sick, and he's like what rank thirty? And I'm seeing people who are like in front of him that just aren't as good. Like I don't know. Top, topology is mad, but this time next year, do you know what I mean? There's there's no doubt I'll be in the top five flyweight. No doubt. Yeah, and, and then we take a look at your previous bout. Obviously, there weren't a pay per view for it, but it was a good performance as well and a good win. But in terms of what you was able to take away from that fight, what was that looking like coming off of such a dominant win in the way that you got it? Yeah, um, it was good. I was going out there to put Abdul away on the feet, to be honest. And then I've been striking with him. I've kicked him clean in his shin straight away. And I've just, uh, like, it hurt. But then he's shot in on me and I've, I've felt him in the grapple and I've been like, Aspire is like we're levels above everywhere. So my grappling was like, oh, like I'm I'm better here as well. So I thought I'd just dominate in the grappling sense as well. And like when I was in the fight, um, I was saying to him, I was like, like I, I'm known as a striker on the scene, and like, look, look, I've just like suplexed you. Do you know what I mean? Like, this is like just showing levels of my gym, like how the gym is so good. 
Yeah, and, and then you, you've mentioned there in terms of obviously people are viewing you as a striker and coming in as a grappler, but do you feel as though in this next fight, once again, you're going to be able to show more of your game? Because it seems with every fight, you're able to show a little bit more with each time and, and sort of show the level that you're at at the moment. Yeah, I'm a bit frustrated, even though my last fight was a good performance. I feel like I was good on the... I wasn't the greatest on the feet. Like, my striking's way better than what it looked. Like, even with, like, my base and my footwork and stuff, I feel like I'm going to show a new level in this fight with, like, composure on the feet and, like, the ability to, like, press my opponent against the cage. And then if, if I want to wrestle, I might wrestle, but I'm looking to keep this one on the feet, to be honest. Yeah, and then the opponent change it, that you've had as well with, with this fight, do you feel as though there's a big major contrast between the two opponents or do you feel as though you're just going to go in there with the same sort of game plan? Well, it's a bit different. I feel like Pew is better than Romeo, in my opinion, and I feel like he just got caught, but Romeo's like a, a different type of striker. He's dead heavy on his lead leg and he's like, he's dead heavy and he's just fro he just throws like combos with his hands and he's not really I think Pew's a bit more universal. He's, I think he's a better wrestler. But no, nah, it does doesn't really change the game plan. I'm I'm just gonna come out and do what I do best and just finish him. Yeah, and, and then obviously with a win here, the, the flyweight division in UKFC, there's a lot of fighters there. And beating Pew, it, it does sort of push you up as well. So do you even think that maybe regional titles are something that are coming into the picture? Or are you just more in interested in getting the experience? Then start to well, look ahead. Um, the fight with Abdul Chowdhury was a number one contender fight for the belt on Budo. So then we've been obviously been looking at the Budo belt in March. I talked to Will Doyle at UKFC. He said he doesn't want to defend the belt because he doesn't want to fight on Budo again. And to be fair, that's standard without them having a pay per view and stuff. And like you seen all the controversy with the referee and with Dylan Duke the other night like when he's been just kicked in the face on the floor and the referee hasn't stopped it or anything. So, like, I don't really um, blame Will for saying, like, he doesn't want to fight on the show again. But there's a title shot for that belt there that um, Chris said he's going to just set me up with someone else for the belt. So I'm looking to fight for that title in March. Yeah, and then one of the final few things from me, in terms of looking at UK MMA at the moment, even in the short time that you've been involved in terms of starting from your debut to now, do you feel as though, in terms of the sports progression, that this is going to be the best generation of amateurs coming up? Uh, if you saw what Shea Willow did to me this morning, probably not. But don't get me wrong with yeah, we've got a solid squad here. Like the likes of like Lewis and Lewis Lever and Tom Harvey that I'm training with on a daily basis. I know they're only a year younger than me, but like animals, the kids are animals. And then you've got Shea Williams, Regan, like. These, these younger kids in our gym, Saskia, they're all like 13, 14. And I'm just thinking, oh, when you're my age, I'm, I'm going to quit MMA because you're so good. Like it's, it's mental, the level. Yeah, and then the final thing for myself, in terms of what the people can expect to see at UKFC, they haven't seen the Welsh Dragon, Connor Sean McKay, Welsh as, Wales as answer to MMA. Wales what is as it answer. that they can expect to see? Uh, the best fly in, in Wales. That's what they're going to see. And they're going to see me finish another another fight. That's all it is to me. I'm just going to go out there and finish them. There you go. Well, that is everything from myself. Obviously, feel free to just sign any social sponsors, things like that, would you? Yeah, shout out Joe Reynolds for being the goat of MMA. What can I say? Every and time. And fight watch rankings are terrible. Peace. <laughs>